Welcome to the third video of APRV video series. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the TCAV method, time control adaptive ventilation developed by Nader Habashi, one of the pioneers of APRV. TCAV is a specific method of APRV being used as an inverse ratio of ventilation. So let's not waste any time. Please remember to subscribe to our channel and share this with your colleagues if you find it useful. And let's start after this short intro. Last video we talked about how you could use APRV as a, a conventional mode of ventilation, a conventional pressure control mode of ventilation, which we said there is really no need to use it that way. You can just use the conventional pressure control mode of ventilation. We want you to use APRV as an inverse ratio ventilation strategy and today we're going to talk about a specific method of APRV being used as an inverse ratio ventilation strategy called TCAV. TCAV stands for time controlled adaptive ventilation. TCAV strategy or method developed by Nader Habashi, one of the pioneer of APRV and I'll put a link to his website the APRV network.com where most of the information in this series were taken from that very useful websites. So TCAV is a specific method of APRV being used as an inverse ratio ventilation strategy. And this method can be used either as an initial mode of ventilation or as a rescue mode, which means a transition from another mode of ventilation to this strategy. So today I'm going to give you the how do you set up your ventilator whether using TCAV as an initial mode of ventilation or as a rescue or transition from another mode. Remember we said whenever we need to set up a patient on the TCAV which is again a specific method of APRV being used as an inverse ratio ventilation strategy you need to provide four values. These are on top of the FiO2 and respiratory rate. These we said we having P high, P low, T high, T low and we explained what every one of those means in the previous two videos. The P high and T high represent the CPAP phase, right? And the P low and T low represent the release phase. So we're going to start first by talking using the TCAV as an initial mode of ventilation. The patient just got intubated now and instead of using the conventional mode of ventilation, you decided to use APRV specifically the TCAV method. Mainly we use it in post-operative patient, can be used in that way, or mainly if there is somebody you just intubated for pulmonary edema or the significant atelectasis, it can, be, it can be very useful. How do we use it in such case? So first of all, whenever you use, you try to use TCAV, make sure that the patient is not preload dependent or volume depleted. Make sure the patient is adequately resuscitated or adequately volume resuscitated. Otherwise, the patient may become profoundly hypotensive if they are preload dependent and they have not adequately volume resuscitated. So remember that very well. In any patient you need to put on positive pressure uh, ventilation, make sure you correct this first, otherwise they will become profoundly hypotensive. So first of all, when you decide to use it as an initial mode, is the chest x-ray or the lung of that patient you're going to use? Is it, are you intubating a patient and their lung is normal? Let's say they were, uh, for example, drug overdose. Because remember, TCAV or APRV is, can be a spontaneous breathe uh, method as well or they're having mild problem, mild pulmonary edema, or they're having severe pulmonary edema, severe pulmonary, uh, severe pneumonia, for example. Because based on that, you will decide how you're going to set these values. So usually say if it's normal, and looking here, the x-ray or the lungs mild or moderate. Severe will follow the moderate. Okay, so these are initial values. And the starting points. After that, you need to adjust these values according to the breathing mechanics, which is something I will talk about in a separate video. Today, we're just going to talk about the starting values 
when you set up somebody, when you need to set somebody, put somebody on APRV, these are the initial value you're gonna tell the respiratory therapist about. So P high, use 15 to 19 centimeter H2O, and for mild, 20 to 24 centimeter H2O, and here 24 to 29, and again, you can use more than 29, especially with obese people, they may need more than that. P low zero for all, zero for all. That will make it a lot easier. And in the next video, I will explain why one is they want to keep this as zero. T high again here. We're gonna use in the mild, in the normal. Sorry, I'm gonna use two to four seconds. And again, this is the initial mode. And in the uh, this is in the normal. In the mild, we're gonna use two to three seconds and in the moderate one to three seconds and again i will explain later on today we're just giving you these values explain why we doing this why is two to four here two to three here one to three here again this is related to the compliance of the lung t low again here we pick 0.4 to 0.6 seconds uh, 0.3 to 0.5 in the mild and the moderate 0.2 to 0.4 seconds plus FiO2 plus respiratory rate and remember respiratory rate affect T high and T low because T high and T low basically they are the respiratory cycle and respiratory cycle or respiratory time is basically equal uh, 60 seconds divided by respiratory rate so 15 that means the respiratory cycle will be four seconds so playing with that respiratory rate i can affect t high and t low remember that again we'll come to all of this why we're using this later on but these are the initial values that you can use when you put somebody on aprv as an initial mode of ventilation you just intubated them and you decided to use APRV, it can be helpful with significant atelectasis, helpful with pulmonary edema. Now let's move and talk about the values when you sit somebody or switch somebody or tra uh, transition somebody from another mode, from pressure control mode here or volume control here to TCAV method. Again, TCAV is a specific method of APRV. So for P high in pressure control, simply we look at the peak pressure of that patient before transition him. So let me bring this here and show you this for a second. So this is a pressure control mode as you see here. So the P high will be simply the pressure control, uh, sorry, the peak pressure, the 39. That will be our P high once we transition them from the pressure control to TCAV method. So simply look, where is the peak pressure? And this is all your P high. So that's in pressure control. So simply in pressure control, we're gonna put here, it's gonna be equal to the peak pressure. How about volume control? Volume control, simply we're gonna use the plateau pressure. And if you remember, the way we get a plateau pressure, we do the inspiratory hold. And I have a quick video here, and excuse me for the noise in the video. This is the plateau pressure here, and it's doing the inspiratory hold maneuver, and it's, uh, I think, somewhere here. So this is the one you're gonna use, is the plateau pressure. You check the inspiratory hold, you check plateau pressure, and this will be your P high if you are transitioning from volume control. So transitioning from volume control, you start P high at plateau pressure, from pressure control, peak pressure. Okay, P low again, the easiest one, zero. T high, now simply you bring respiratory rate, 60 second, 60 divided by respiratory rate. That will give you the respiratory cycle. And this, you will subtract from it the T low and the same here. So simply, if the patient was at PC or VC, volume control using 15 breath per minute, 60 divided by 15, that's four seconds, and then you subtract the T low from. Now the T low, usually in both, we pick a range from 0.3 to 0.2 second as a starting point. And again, all these are starting value. You need to adjust this value based on the breath mechanics and lung mechanics that we're gonna cover in the next video. Again, this in this is an adult population, pediatric population probably need to use shorter values. These are initial starting values. Then you need, that's what I'm gonna explain next video, you need to 
Look at the mechanics, just according to the minute ventilation, the ABG values and CO2. I'll stop here. We'll continue next video where we'll talk about how to adjust and optimize value based on the ABG, based on the minute ventilation, based on the breathing mechanics.